Hi. So my name is Richard Hughes. I'm from Red Hat. I wasn't going to do a talk at Guardec, and I promised I wouldn't do anything controversial. So here I am standing talking about payments and donations. Um, I'm the GNOME software maintainer. I've been doing um, software stuff for, for I don't know, like 15 years or something. What I'm going to do is I'm, I've wrote some slides about 10 minutes ago. I'm going to rattle through them really quickly because everyone thinks that payments and donations is really simple and straightforward, but there's actually quite a lot of pain points. It seems like when you mix like sort of like uh, free software and money together, it kind of gets a few people uh, uh, riled up. So I'll run through some points, and then at the end we'll go through everyone, everyone's opinions in, in, in the room. The slides will take like two minutes, and then we'll just talk about stuff. So at the moment we've got some information in AppStream which lets you have like a URL for donations. So you just get a, a URL to the project website which may or may not have information on how to donate using PayPal or Bitcoin or something. And we don't show it in GNOME software because every upstream has a different way of doing it. Some of them have to call it donations, some of them have to call it payment. It's all a bit complicated. And so at the moment, we're not showing anything. Um, even if there was a button, why would people click it? Um, and we kind of shift all the burden from for reporting and money and currency and refunds completely to the upstream, which kind of doesn't, doesn't really work. So if we do are taking money, when are we going to collect the payment? Are we going to ask the user for payment before the app is installed? Um, but what, what if the app doesn't work? The app user is going to want their refund for the app that they've just spent $5 on that doesn't actually install on their system. Or we could, we could track the user and say, okay, you've used the app for five hours now. Do you want to donate? Which kind of seems a bit creepy and probably not a good idea. If the app's literally crap, if the app doesn't work or if the app's not very good, the user says, actually, I donated like $20 for that app and it's rubbish. Can I get my money back, please? Who's the person that actually sorts the refund? Can we get the refund without p paying too lots of payment processor fees, etc.? So we could always ask for a donation when the user updates the app. And the logic is if, when you, they have a chance to um, install the app, try it out, play with it, etc. Could we ask for a donation when they come to update, which seems a plausible thing to do, until we turn on automatic updates? Because with Flatpak, you can just do sane automatic updates in the background um, without any interruption. So should we ask every time we do an update, or just the first time, or just the third time? It's, it's all a bit crazy. And then the big question, who should get the donation? The upstream maintainer is the obvious choice, but then the distributor is the one that's paying for the bandwidth and probably for the person who's doing all the QA. Should we give a percentage to each person, like 10% to the distributor, 25% to the distributor, half to the distributor? Uh, should that be configurable per project? Should that be configurable globally? Um, like GNOME Foundation, etc. cetera. Um, if I package an app which uses GTK, should part of my donation go to GTK? If my app is a wrapper around Flickr, should some of my money go to Google for providing the service and the bandwidth? Um, it kind of gets into a bit gnarly about that I should share some of that money. I'm, I'm building my stuff on top of other stuff that people have given me for free, so it seems slightly disingenuous to take all the money myself. If I'm being paid as my day job to build this app, is it morally right or legally right to be able to take payment for code that I've already been paid to write? It seems, if not legally dubious, maybe morally dubious. Should maybe that donation be my choice to give it to the FSF or the Gnome Foundation or um, um, Red Cross or something? Should we always give a cut to someone? Should a GNOME app, which is using all the GNOME technologies, always give 10% of the donation to the GNOME Foundation? Should it always give 10% to the Free Software Foundation? Because without the FSF, we wouldn't have anything else. Or is the FSF not relevant in the app that I'm writing, if I'm just, use, if I'm just writing a YouTube downloader? Should the user, when they come to donate, be aware of where the money's actually going? So if I was paying, if I was do donating $2, and I found out that $1.50 was going to PayPal, and f only 40, 50 cents was actually going to the developer, I might think twice and say, okay, well, rather than doing 10 donations of $2, I might just do one donation, which is a much bigger chunk and much smaller payment processor fee. As an end developer, should I, be, should I know what the developer's going to do with that money? Is that developer paying for his mortgage, or is that developer paying for a hack fest? Because I'm more likely to say, thank you for providing a, an app, give some money for a hack fest so that you can go and do cool stuff with people around the world. But even if we ask the end developer to say, if they say, um, this is for my um, dying child to pay for medical expenses, how can we actually verify that? 
if Upstream's unable to take the donation for whatever reason, say you're an employee, paid to write on it, you can't legally take it, should the packager, should the, should the person that's submitting the app to FlatHub be able to reroute that donation to somewhere useful, somewhere like the FSF or the Gnome Foundation or something? Or should it be Upstream's decision be res respected that the app shouldn't be paid for under any circumstances? Are we allowed to use a non-free payment processor? I don't think there exists a free payment processor with, with perhaps the possible exception of using Bitcoin, but then Bitcoin has its own challenges where because it can be anonymous, the IRS can't do audits and it's, it, it causes all, all sorts of tons of legal issues. Um, so realistically, if we do start collecting money from users, at least for small donations, the vast majority of that money is gonna be going to PayPal, it's gonna be going to the like Swipe Connect type team. Is that okay? Is that fair? Let's say bosses are sitting in the room, I develop an app for Red Hat, I get fired. Red Hat spent all that money on me to develop an app for the ecosystem. And I continue to be the, ex the maintainer when I'm fired. Should I be allowed to get the donations on the app that some other company has paid me to write? It's all a bit like gnarly, gnarly questions. Another good example is like the Redshift. Like in the pre previous GNOME release, we moved the, um, the nightlight functionality from an application like Redshift into the platform itself. Now, if I was a Redshift developer earning, say, I don't know, $200 a month from had people using the Redshift functionality, and we said, oh, we're going to take that feature from your app, put it into the platform so that everyone can use it in the control center and using them setting Steam and see I've got an extra process, etc. it'll be much, much better. The Redshift developer will be like, hang on, you've stolen the idea and you've basically cut my revenue stream to zero so that I can understand why people might get upset. So what would the, why would people want to put their functionality into the platform itself, into the control center, into the setting daemon, if they're not gonna get any revenue from it? So right, that's all the gnarly points. You've all now realized that it's actually really complicated. So I wanted basically to give everyone to come and like shout out different, well not shout, but like with a microphone, different ideas they've got, different um, worries they've got, um, and generally that. Right, yeah, I can predict that this one is going to get a lot of different people, so please wait yeah. for the microphone. <laughs> so I think all of those are really interesting questions. Hard to answer all of them. Uh, I wonder if uh, it wouldn't be better to start simpler. There are apps that do accept donations, right? Projects that do accept them already. Um, and when they do, it would be convenient if you if that process was integrated uh, with, uh, you know, with the App Center, with uh, you know, Gnome Software or uh, FlatHub or whatever. Um, so perhaps what a good starting point, and I, I don't know if, you know, it, w it probably wouldn't address all of those things, but a good starting point would be to have some kind of standard API for the projects that do want to have it uh, to be able to opt in uh, and uh, do that in a standardized way ac across, across the platform. I don't know. So Really good point, because what we, we kind of talked about with various different people over the last few months was basically sticking something in the app stream data so that you could say the money's going to be spent on this, 10% yes. is going to the FSF, 10% is going to the Known Foundation. So you could actually display it in the UI. And then I think your idea was basically to have it almost turn into like a massive URI with all the parameters like min amount equals $5, et cetera, et cetera, which would then be passed to the upstream site, which and they would cope with basically doing the pro payment. That be right. Um, maybe. Uh, Problem is with doing that is that you, you make every single upstream contact the payment processors, get involved with PayPal, setting up accounts, doing audits, all this kind of stuff, and it's kind of like a high bar for a new app to do. If it's just a toy app you want, you've spent like a few hours on, you don't want to set up a small limited company just to take fifty dollars in donations. I'm also thinking as like. So you almost like a standard API. So it's almost like a man in the middle taking the, like, almost like forming like a payment processor. But as soon as you form a payment processor, you've got all this legalese about like money, accountancy, yeah, transparency. Yeah, you're, you're assuming that the app already has it. Mm, that's and, and if they do, we should. So there's about a dozen apps which have this already, like LibreOffice, Inkscape, et cetera, et cetera. There's not many. Why, why do they have? 
couple have Patreon. It's, it's a real, like some people say we can only accept Bitcoin. Some people say we can accept everything except Bitcoin. Um, some people won't use PayPal, some people only use PayPal. It, it really is too complicated maybe if we want to do it. Because yeah. it's too complicated. Well, this is the so small... This this support Patreon and, I don't know, PayPal.me. And if you want to receive payment to this system, as this version and one, this is what we have. And the same that in the website of the application, they will have a donation section. And maybe they will have one link or two links because they will have three developers or whatever. If they want to provide just one link or three in the upstream, that's their problem. They will manage the how they spend or split the money. Uh, you see, like so this. do you not think the end developer will just take their money to their PayPal and not share it with maybe the FSF or the Donut Foundation? Or or if, if they are honest, they say we want money for the project. Because um, that's something they could declare ahead of time and put in the UI. Like if you donate, you could say, look, your money is going to these places, developers, to pay for X. I mean, the, uh, I see the UI is that you click on download, or, or you want to click on download, at first you have a dialogue and say, hey, do you want to help uh, these developers? Or alternatively, these other people that they like, like the Python Foundation or whatever. Mm. Then you click there and maybe a bit many other opens or whatever, and, and let them continue with the or uh, until all the whole mm, way to Patreon and come back goes, it doesn't work to download. I'm not mm -hmm. responding to the site. But it, it could be like things like that. Showing, hey, <coughs> you can or help them or help these other organizations that they like. And that's it. So you kind of touched on it as well. Like, if it's a one off donation, that's going to be a di very different UI to, like, I want to give this project $2 every month like a Patreons type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is like, how do we get the user to click the button? We could almost do like a humble bundle where you click install and it asks you to move the slider from $0 <laughs> to $20 or something. But that's kind of in your face. That's not, that, that to me is on the wrong side of the line for making the user donate. Yeah, is it? I mean, I think the user experience that people encounter, that you saw in the trial, that they saw And then at, w at what point do you nag the user Hey, you've used this for five hours. Fancy giving five dollars? But a donation is not necessarily paying, right? It's you totally different it. legally. Hmm? It's totally different legally. So in some countries, are le no, they can legally accept donations, but not legally accept payments, and vice versa. In the mindset of, of a person also using it, like I decide to donate because I have, I, I, I found that it's <coughs> something cool, and I want to recognize. Yeah. Um, hey, um, I got the mic. <laughs> 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 now I, I wanted to say b b before uh, you started um, that I think those are very valid concerns and they're for real. I also think they, they should be as complicated as we want to make them. Mm -hmm. Because like Cosimo said, I think that we shouldn't think about all the implications that everything, every like, is a donation legal in Germany if you donate to this guy who's employed by someone? I mean, that's, you cannot, you cannot solve it all. Uh, so, so we would have to start simple. And I think, I think a more uh, pressing issue uh, or starting issue would be, like, do you make it um, as a centralized way of donating? Like, Gnome Foundation would have this system where you get all the collected money uh, that people donated through GNOME software, and then it distributes it because it has the information of who you donated it to. That would simplify, like instead of having an API that you go and uh, here's the Bitcoin backend or whatever, <coughs> sorry, you would just have uh, uh, information in the app stream data or something like that. Uh, so the GNOME Foundation could know who you're donating to. So and then at the end like of the GNOME month- software, I would say keep it, use it for GNOME Hackfest or something. Uh, but but I, I think, I honestly is. think that does, that does not really matter. At least when I, when I donate uh, to Wikipedia or to FSF or whatever, uh, I donate because I like their work. I don't really want to know if with my money they're paying for salaries of the people or they're 
donating it back to 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 developers of other things at least i mean if people have so many concerns then they should should go and say okay instead of donating ten dollars to to um i don't know to gnome software we i donate five to the to to this guy that is working on gtk full st full time or well not full time <laughs> uh and stuff like that and um and now shameless plug uh, because <laughs> I, I i've been trying to to present this idea of uh having this the uh, like subscription based donations if you will uh that would be divided then according to a certain criteria and also include the humble in a bundle thing that uh richard mentioned uh so may maybe maybe i'll talk about that in the next days or uh now? but yeah i think uh, what now <laughs> now I, d I don't think there is time for that uh that's why i want my own <laughs> discussion but but yeah but i i really think that those uh, i mean money is always complicated PayPal is always going to get their cut. Mm. PayPal is also very easy to use, and most people use it. Uh, Bitcoin will get you in trouble with, with the authorities in some countries. So I think we should not try to solve everything. We should try to start simple, try to centralize it, because that would be the difference, right? The difference is that, because right now, if I want to pay for Emacs, I know who to donate to. and. Uh, and then who gets the money? I mean, I imagine that ideally GNOME the GNOME Foundation uh, could be like uh, one of these centralized ways of donating the money, then Canonical uh, or whoever. And then, of course, there is all those questions like, what if Canonical now goes and says, OK, the developers only get 30%. That kind of something like that happened before. And, uh, and you know, problems will, like that will happen everywhere and all the time. and. Um, they get sorted out, I think. Because like if uh, as a user, if I'm donating and then I found out that my distro is taking is taking uh, 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 an amount that I do not agree with, then I stop donating or I stop using or I write to them. Um, I mean, like I said, I think those those problems are, are not all solvable by the system that makes the payment. But you'd also agree that it's not unreasonable for the distro to say, can I have a few percent for actually distributing your app and paying for the bandwidth and paying for the QA and stuff? So you can sort of see why other people would want a cut, because they're essentially distributing your app for free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, well, sure, but I mean, you should, you should donate to Fedora. Yeah. yeah. But that would be a different thing. Mm. And yeah, but that's 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 why uh, yeah that's why I tried to mention that uh, if you have uh, something that is a bit more centralized, like uh, Fedora or whoever gets the money, and then they they. I mean, you, you send the money to an application and then uh, they could explain to you that they get a certain percentage that goes to, to the infrastructure and who, uh, whatever. Yeah, like, I, sh I don't think we should solve all that. I strongly agree. <laughs> um, I, I don't think GNOME Software can solve all of these problems. Um, in actual fact, GNOME Software only has an interaction with one entity per application, and that entity is not the upstream, it's not the distributor, it's whoever is publishing that repository that sends it to GNOME Software. So the best that we can do there is to send you back to wherever the application came from. And mm, in I disagree. I think if you've got the data from the app data file that's populated by upstream, then you could use that to then ping on it's somewhere else. It's populated by the upstream, and then it's masked by the oh, distributor sure? in creating that's the repo. So packager, yeah. I in the end, you are only getting one source of authority of whatever is going on here. So if I was, you know, nefarious Linux distro, I could rewrite all of those, take Richard Hughes yeah. out and, you know, pocket all the money. Um, but I actually think that's fine, right? Because uh, there is, you know, as Joaquin was saying, there is, there is, you know, this is an open space, right? PR it, pushback. We, yeah. So y the only API that you need to worry about is to send that click back to wherever the app came from. And there you can implement centralized, decentralized, or whatever you want, Bitcoin or whatever. Um, and that allows you to do something very simple in GNOME software that doesn't involve solving the whole chain. Mm. And then it's a kind of per, per organization decision. Right? GNOME Foundation might say, right, we're going to accept payments. We can only do dollars. We can't do Bitcoin because we're in the US. Um, it's tax deductible because we're 501c3, whatever, mm. right? But we're going to pocket all the money and spend it on GNOME hackfests. And, it's up and that's how GNOME does that. it. Right, so, so GNOME pays the bill, GNOME collects the money. So yeah. if, you, if you're a GNOME application developer and you're happy with that, fine. If you're not happy for GNOME to distribute application on that terms, those terms, you must remove application from GNOME and put it somewhere else. So FlatHub, for instance, could have a different policy. FlatHub could say, all right, we're going to put all the money into you know, Rob Limited. It's going to be great. We're going to spend it all on beer. 
Um, but that's the, that's the deal, right? If you're if you're an upstream developer and you don't want your application distributed on those terms, then you turn up and you say, I don't agree with your terms. Please remove my application. So the user has you know a diversity of where they can get the applications, um, and the developers have a diversity of at least they have a, a, a certain level of influence. Obviously, ultimately, if it's an open source thing. You put the license on. You accept that people can do whatever the license permits. Sure. So the you know evil hub could always publish your application and steal all of the uh, the, mm -hmm. the donations. Um, but you know don't use evil hub, right? <laughs> yeah, hmm? It can happen now. Exactly. Yeah, I mean that that's yeah, that that, that is yeah, that yeah, is yeah, the deal, problem. right? So, you know, or Oracle or whatever is is. You know, yeah. quite similar to another distribution, right? Yeah. You know, um, not that they're evil, but yeah, yes, they. Um, the the only other last point, I, someone has their hand up patiently out there, um, just about um, payments uh, versus donations. Um, I think if you were implementing a payment system, you would need to worry about all of those. You know, try before you buy, refund, etc. Yeah. I think going for donations first simplifies things a lot. I think if someone is making a payment system, they you actually want to conclude the transaction before it goes into your private app stream mm. that then allows you to install it. And the refund has to be based on how long has it been available to you and that kind of thing. But that you would do before it shows up in GNOME software, possibly. And then you, maybe you could tweak it later of like, here's so something you could get, you there need to are buy. No paid apps. Makes it way simpler. But then yeah. what's the, what's, how do you get people into our ecosystem? Right, I, I think this. I've got friends who are like, sort of, they have like an app on the iOS store and the Windows store thing. And they get like $50, $60 a month. Oh, I have to finish, but I'm going to finish anyway. They have like $50, $60 a month, which is like beer money to them. But if you said take, if you took the money away and you didn't have a way of monetizing their thing, they couldn't just rely on the donation. Right. So th those published organizations have to solve that problem, mm. but it can be version two, right? I guess one last Unfortunately, question. that's our last question. We are out of time again. I'm not sure if Andreas was before me. So I was going to say, the, the current workflow for donating to a certain application is clicking the website link in GNOME software, right? Um, yeah, so you would need to know yeah. that you would need to go to their website to and discover, oh, I can actually donate to this mm -hmm. product, right? And making like a donation button or whatever, right, is only a, a short link to that kind of thing. And th because then you wouldn't need to implement like, imagine having like to log into PayPal through yeah. GNOME software, it gets very complicated very quickly, right? Inputting Visa, it's like credit card information. Go through GNOME software. I think it would have to always be on a website somewhere. Um, yeah. So then it's just a specific URL you just point to in that sense, which then is a button that says donate or whatever. Mm. So, yeah. <coughs> to be fair, uh, he'll have his question. <laughs> I'll be super quick. Um, I just wanted to mention, are you familiar with the elementary projects? Current, like, um, yeah, so yeah. I've got to be careful what I say here. So I've talked to the elementary guys about how they've done their um, payment cut, and et cetera. They, you, they're using something um, called, what's it called, Swipe. The payment process is called PayPal, Swipe Connect. Um, and it works as a, basically they take like a set cut, like 20% or something, of all the apps sold before. So they can do the whole humble bundle, bundle, bundle pay before you install type thing. Um, and I've got to be really careful here. So they're taking money, and they, I'm not sure they ha are a big enough company for the IRS to care about, if that makes sense. So there's, there's, there's really like, um, I have to say this in, in a good way. I think it's very different doing that as a small project as opposed to doing it something like in Fedora, where there is a big s surface to be sued, if that makes sense. Um, I've, I've looked at it. And I've looked at a lot of the, uh, the Swipe Connect stuff as well, which is super interesting. doesn't really go with the donations thing so well. So I'm like super over time. So I guess thank you all for listening and talking.